Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series. As you can see, this is our main method from the previous episode, which was about abstract and final classes. But this episode, we're going to be going into a new project all about the Java Sound API. Now, the Java Sound API, while you know it's pretty cool and um, fairly simple compared to other programming languages sound API it is quite large so this episode we will only be delving into the oh, that's the wrong name we'll only be delving into the um, clips of the Java sound API which we'll get on to explain but as always we just start out with our main class and just as well our main method Ta-da. Okay. The first thing we're going to need, which I'll set up as a variable outside of the main method, is the public static. Well, that doesn't matter, but it's a mixer. A mixer is basically the top-level component of the Java Sound API. So we're going to import it from javax.sound.sampled. Now, in the Java Sound API, there's um, the sampled package, and there's also a MIDI package, or an MIDI package, which you can interface to make MIDI noises, but we won't be going over that in this episode. I think I'll probably have three episodes around the sampled package, and uh, one or two around the MIDI package. Since the sampled package has three parts, which is the clip, which we'll be going over this episode, the source data line, and the target data line. But how the Java Sound API works, now there are very nice handy diagrams that you can find online to explain you know, how the lines and the mixers and the um, different things work with each other, but those don't really matter because I can just explain it to you. So the first thing we have to do is that the mixer is basically the thing that contains all of the line informations on your computer. So we're going to try to get those, so we're going to make an array of mixer information and this will be getting the information of all of the mixers on your system so that means we're gonna call audio system which has a whole bunch of static methods for us to access the systems audio for you know lack of a better word so we're going to just so we can see what this looks like and do system dot oh, well I should probably add <laughs> arguments of this. There we go. Now we'll sift through all those. So we're going to do info dot get name and then info dot get description. So if we quickly just run this we should just get a whole bunch of different things. So, you know, four ports. I have my AirPlay port since, you know, I'm on a Mac and I can AirPlay. I have my built in input, my built in output, and I have my AirParrot, which I use. It's just a third party application. But I have my built in input and my built in output, as well as, oh, well, there's a lot more. This is the default audio device. So, I think the default audio device, more often than not, will be the first index in the uh, mix infos array when you get the get the mixer info from the audio system and then there's a whole bunch of miscellaneous ones so basically um, normally you'll just call the first one especially if you're just doing output and the rest of the ones you would have to nitpick you'd have to know what's already on their system pretty much so as I said we can just uh, we can comment this out instead of getting rid of it entirely and then we can actually get the mixer. So how we do that, we're going to say the mixer, which is our class variable, is going to equal the audio system dot get the mixer. So we have to have a mixer info for this, and we do in the form of our mix infos array, and we'll just call index zero, which will be the default audio output device. And I think it's also the default audio in, depending on what you call from it, which of course we'll get into the uh, other episodes. The next thing we need to do now that we have the mixer for the audio port that we want, we now need to get the line for it. So we need a data line 
dot info because this whole thing is based on basically you have to get the information about the line before you can actually get the line so it will equal new so this data line info that we're doing how we can specify it is that we want we want this to be formatted to a clip so we want to get a data line that's formatted to handle clips which we'll also have to import and the format since all we're doing this is to get um, a clip we can just set this to null now we can actually try to get the clip first we're going to go up here and do public static clip so you can actually access it and since this has the potential to throw an error we're going to cast this output to clip and it's actually going to be mixer dot get line and the info we have is the data info so the data info will make this output a casted clip but the uh, compiler doesn't know that so we have to cast to clip anyway so now we know we have a clip and the error that this can throw is a line unavailable exception if I can spell can I spell? Uh, apparently not but of course with most of the errors we just print the stack trace okay so now we actually have a clip. If we run, run this, nothing should, should happen. At least no errors, I hope. Yeah, it just terminated. So now, we can actually worry about putting a sound file in there. So what I actually have is just a sound file that I have already made in the past that I can just quickly drop into here. So now if we refresh this, you see there's a lunar intro.wav. Now when for the Java sound system, they natively support the um, dot wave format. And I think other AAC um, codecs for compression. So dot WAV and dot AAC, I'm to believe. But um, that's just natively. You can also make your own. Um, interpreters to import your own audio classes which I've heard is very easy I mean I'm going to start working on one soon so I can play .mp3 since it's a lot easier to get those compared to .wavs for different sounds you want but uh, I digress so we need to do another try since this will have a lot of things that can throw exceptions first thing we can have a URL and the, uh, you can have other things besides URLs for this but the reason we're doing this is that we're going to do main.class.getResource. And the thing we're getting will be slash MMC. And right inside MMC is the lunar intro.wav. Uh, that's not what we want. Okay. We do need to import URL from java.net. Okay. Now after we do that, we're going to make an audio input stream object. Since this is one of the simplest ways to actually get it. That's going to be get audio input stream. Now as you can see, there are four different methods that do this. So you can either put a file in an input stream in, a URL, an audio format, or an encoding. Um, what I normally do, I either put, you know, a file, input stream, or URL in, but right now we're do going to do a URL since that's what you get when you actually get resources from classes, but um, if you don't know, get res um, the get resource when you call from a class, instead of having to call resources that are outside of the actual application, like when you finally package it into a dot .jar, you normally have to keep all the data outside, but with get resources, you can have things inside of the class. But normally, you wouldn't put them alongside the uh, classes themselves. You put normally put them in a resources folder. But that's a conversation for another day. So we just say sound URL. We have to import this. So now we have an audio import stream, 
And the final thing we can do with the, with the audio import stream is clip dot open. Now, normally, uh, as part of the line, since clip is a type of line, this is the normal void method that comes with line. But since we have a clip, we have to give it an audio input stream so it knows what file to use. So we just say audio stream. Now, what a clip is compared to the target um, data line and the source data line is that a clip fully loads the specified file before playing it so it knows the exact length and the exact um, time and all the information about that certain audio file before it starts playing it. The difference is that a source data line uh, doesn't, a so, um, the source data line or target data line, one of them is input and one of them is output and you know the clip is also output. So the source data line is also output but it doesn't know the full length or something when it's before it opens. So you can feed it live data so you can just input from a microphone and output from a microphone at the same time and the source data line doesn't need to know the um, all the details about it before it so it's good for doing live things. And the target data line is just the only thing that provides sound input for the native API. Now we have to catch a lot of exceptions here. Now I could just say catch exception but then you wouldn't know what exceptions you'd so. So this can also throw a line unavailable exception. And it can also throw a unsupported audio file exception. Probably have to import it. Or to auto import when I do that. Yes. And the last thing it can throw is an IO exception. There. Now all those errors are gone. Okay, so the last thing we would have to do is clip dot start, and that'll just start playing the clip. And then the now the problem with start um, clip dot start is that the Java sound whenever you start something it opens a new thread. And as you should know about you know Java programming is that as soon as the um, main thread closes, then the whole application terminates. So what we need to do is I'm going to do a do while loop which is what I've just been using recently to handle this one inadvantageous thing about the Java uh, sound API is just thread.sleep for say 50 milliseconds you can probably make that longer it's not like this is impeding on the uh, sound streaming of the line but uh, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. I'm going to do this while uh, clip dot is active. So why we do a do while instead of a while is that the clip start will just take a couple milliseconds to actually get started. So if we do a while clip is active right after we tell it to start, it wouldn't have started yet. So we just skip over it and the application would terminate. Since we do this, it waits 50 milliseconds before checking the condition, which means this will have enough time to start and then it'll actually get into the loop. So if we run it now, and there's the music clip that we have. And I just stopped that so it doesn't go on forever. But this has been the first episode about me teaching you the Java Sound API. The next episode will be going over source data lines, which are fairly similar, but not exactly. We'll probably get a different, different music file for that. But again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.